We grind tungsten carbide end mills with a resin bonded diamond wheel. Our wheel supplier keeps talking about Q prime values and how we should use uh, up around six or seven Q prime during roughing. We just grind at values we like. We just speak, choose speeds and feeds that work well for us. Is there something to this whole Q prime business? The Q prime value is just how much material are you removing per unit time. So the calculation, the very typical calculation you see a lot, especially with wheel manufacturers, and you see this in a lot of academic articles, is what's my Q prime or what's my specific material removal rate? It's a very straightforward calculation. It's what's my depth of cut in millimeters times what's my feed rate in millimeters per second? You can do the conversion from inches to millimeters or in inches to second to millimeters per second. And what you get is a value in millimeters squared per second, which is your material removal rate. But what we do is we take the wheel width out of the equation. Because if my wheel is one inch wide, I'm going to have a certain material removal rate. If my wheel is two inches wide, well, I'm going to double my material removal rate. But it doesn't really matter because, well, now I've got double the width of the wheel doing the work. So I haven't really changed my grinding conditions very much. So we take the wheel width out of the equation and say, what's my material removal rate, let's say in cubic millimeters per second per millimeter wheel width, or just to make it easy, what's my material removal rate in square millimeters per second, which is the depth of cut times the feed rate in millimeters per second. Now, why does this matter? Let's say you're grinding tungsten carbide, and you want to get high material removal rates because that'll reduce your cycle time. And Typically, uh, every wheel, every workpiece will have material removal rates that are typical for that grinding operation. So if I'm doing rough grinding of tungsten carbide end mills, I know that eh, kind of a typical material removal rate for that operation is a Q prime of five square millimeters per second. So that's, so I go to a company and they're grinding at around five. I say, okay, that's a respectable number. If they tell me they're grinding at 10, or I do the calculation, I say, well, you guys are pushing your luck a little bit, but maybe you're pulling it off. If I do the calculations and they're only grinding at a material removal rate of one square millimeter per second, I'd say, well, you guys, you know, you can do better than that. Also, let's say cylindrical grinding, I can do the calculation, and if I'm using aluminum oxide, a eh, typical value might be two or three. If I've got a super abrasive CBN wheel on hardened steel, typical value might be 12, 13, and it all depends on the type of grinding operation. Sometimes, let's say you're grinding of ceramics, you get very low material removal rates just because it's a more delicate operation. So what you can do is you can go to your grinding operations. You're grinding different diameters of your tungsten carbide end mills. Sometimes you're doing one inch end mills. Sometimes you're doing eighth of an inch end mills. Do the calculations and say, what's a good value for this wheel? What can this wheel tolerate? What can it take? And wheel suppliers will say, well, this new resin bonded wheel that we're using or this new hybrid bond wheel that we've introduced, you can get Q prime values of around seven. So go over your grinding operation and that's about the ballpark you should be looking at uh, for that particular wheel. Common mistake people make is that they use respectable material removal rates with their big diameter parts. So let's say they're grinding tungsten carbide end mills one inch in diameter, and you do the calculations of what they're doing, and they've got a specific material removal rate, Q prime, of six square millimeters per second. I say, okay, that's, that's good. They go to very small sizes, let's say quarter inch, and you find, well, they're only using two square millimeters per second. That's their Q prime value. They could increase it. So go to your shop, take a little data and say, oh, what are uh, the material removal rates of various grinding operations? And then you can say, OK, for this particular machine and this wheel and this part, it looks like our limit is, let's say, five. So that's kind of what we're going to shoot for in all our grinding operations. And we're going to tell our operators, you should be grinding during roughing at a specific material removal rate of around five. If you choose your parameters and you're doing 15, well, you're going to be in trouble. If you're tr choosing your parameters and you've got a specific material removal rate of one, now you can do better, cut that cycle time and still probably not have issues with burn, chatter, and whatnot. So figure out what specific material removal rates are good for your particular wheel, and then 
use that for pretty much all your roughing operations for that wheel workpiece combination.